work-life balance, and best self, balderdash. I have to be straight up with you. I've already alluded to it, but there is a term that you need to renounce, if not repudiate, from your leadership lexicon forthwith. Work-life balance. It's my position that the concept is as ludicrous a term as right-sizing or thinking outside the box. The term is flawed. Actually, it's worse than that. It's a downright lie. And the inherent promise that it offers is also delusory at best. The phrase work-life balance first appeared in the 1980s. In their 2014 article, Work-Life Balance, History Costs and Budgeting for Balance, Siva Raja and Sharon Stein note that it was a key concept of the women's liberation movement, which advocated for, among other things, a women's right to maternity leave and flexible work schedules. While more should be done on this particular file in many global jurisdictions, those issues are not the topic of this book. Work-life balance should not be the goal for your team members. I posit that work-life balance as a concept is ineffective because it entirely misses the point and has for decades. Yet, too many leaders continue to apply work-life balance as a prosthesis for a team member's happiness. It is not nearly enough to be balanced between work and life. If someone keeps all the plates spinning, as the idiom goes, they can be considered a balanced human being. Is that enough? Is that a way to live? To work? I suggest that striving for work-life balance is neither a fun nor a rewarding way to live or work. The sheer prevalence of workplace burnout points to the inanity of work-life balance as a goal. Even the World Health Organization decided to officially classify burnout as a syndrome related to, quote, chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed, unquote. The goal is not to balance. I recommend something else entirely. As this book continues, I will provide evidence, stories, and helpful techniques for an exciting new leadership archetype. As a leader, you can provide the framework and the tools to help people be their best in work and life. You can also use them to help yourself achieve this. Like work-life balance, there is another phrase freely used by many leaders that requires examination. We want you to bring your best self to work. Sometimes leaders refer to it as whole selves or authentic selves instead of best self. The problem? First off, the term is a catchphrase gone sideways. It's terrible HR speak, as useful as workforce optimization, cost efficiency programs, soft skills, and core competencies. We already have enough ineffectual buzzword bingo phrases to last a lifetime in the workplace. Bringing our best or authentic selves to work, much like work-life balance, cannot be the goal. To attempt to do so is also woefully useless. The way many workers make a living is fundamentally changing, either by choice or out of necessity. And to make a living is to accept that there is an inherent bond between work and life, between what we do and our definition of self. Remember, every team member is a gardener tending to their own garden box. Subsequently, we must consider how work and life fit in with one another and how they are aligned. We bring our work to our life every day. However, our life gets entangled in our work. There is no way around it. Work is what we do and the place we do it. It's both a noun and a verb. In part, it's also how we are known to other people. Conversely, life is our existence, the forming forces and principles of our being. It's who we are, how we act, and what we stand for throughout our time on earth. You bring those forces and principles into work. It's unavoidable. Think about it. Your life is how people will eulogize you when you pass on. Life equals the self. Your self.